Does anybody have homework questions? Let's continue looking at the platonic solids together. So you have your tetrahedron. Tetrahedron has four sides. Tetra means four. And it's all triangles. So these are the most symmetric shapes you can have in three dimensions, except for a sphere. The platonic solids are so symmetrical. They have all the same side length. So as you're making these, the first thing to do is make sure all your straws are cut to the same length. In fact, if you had straws and you're still cutting them, probably cutting them into thirds is the best way. So all the edges are the same length. All the faces are the same shape. So this one is all triangles. And at each corner, you have the same number of faces meeting. Okay, so at this one, you have three faces meeting at each corner. So sometimes people try to make this and they accidentally put a square on one side. Well, that's not, that's not a tetrahedron. That would be a pyramid. You need to have triangles on each side, all the same size faces. The cube is a more familiar shape, so that's probably easier to make. All the faces are squares. Again, you have the same number of faces meeting at each corner. Then we have the octahedron. What does octa stand for? Eight. Eight, good. So eight sides. And these sides are all triangles. So if you made a shape and one of your sides wasn't a triangle and the rest were, it was not a platonic solid that you made. This time, though, instead of the... Um, tetrahedron having three sides meeting at each corner, the tetrahedron has four sides meeting at every single corner. So if your tetrahedron didn't come out correctly, count and see if you have four triangles meeting at each corner. So dodecahedron and icosahedron were both pretty tricky. This one is the dodecahedron. It has pentagons, five sides. Uh, pentagons have five sides. And at each corner, you have three pentagons meeting. So again, make groups of three pentagons. And then um, you have these two ends that are the three pentagons and connect those with pentagons. And as you're connecting, make sure you always have three pentagons meeting at each corner. The most sides was the icosahedron. This has five triangles meeting at each corner. So to me, it was easiest to make two sets of five triangles and think of those as the ends. So left and right end. And then uh, connect those with a row of triangles going down the middle. And as you connect those, you're getting five triangles meeting at each corner again. So you get a, a little row of triangles going down the middle. So as you were constructing them, that was the lesson, to think about how these are put together. So hopefully you had a feel for how symmetric they are and how they go together. I had asked you in class on Wednesday, could you make a regular solid with six triangles meeting at each corner? So the most that we had made had five triangles meeting at each corner. Now these triangles would have to be uh, equilateral triangles to be a regular solid. Because the regular solids are made out of regular polygons, which all have the same length sides and the same size angles. So well, let's give that some thought. Can you have six triangles meeting at one corner? Did anybody think about that? What that would look like? Well, let's think about it together. So how many 
degrees are in each corner of your equilateral triangle. Mm -hmm. Yep. Did you, what did you say? 60. Yes, exactly. 60 degrees. Because you have 180 degrees and it's split equally among the um, three corners. So if you had six equilateral triangles meeting, how many degrees does that make? How many degrees would that make? You can get your calculator if you need to. Yes? 360. 360. So if I try to squeeze one more triangle in here from 5 to 6 to make a new shape, it flattens out. The 360 degrees flattens. into a, because um, they all would meet square then in a, a, in a, in a plane. It makes the um, triangles become a plane instead of having this three-dimensional shape. What about the question, could you make a regular solid with four squares meeting at each corner? How many degrees would that make up? If you have four squares meeting in a corner, yeah, same thing. 360 degrees. So the answer for both of these is no. So in the search for creating the platonic solids, or regular solids, the problem is structural. You want to put regular, regular polygons together for each side, and the same number of sides meeting at each corner. So there's some physical restrictions there on what you can build and how to build it. But I'd like you to explore the platonic solids more carefully. So we're going to make a chart and quantify them. So we're going to look at each solid and count how many vertices there are. Vertices are another name for corners. Okay. How many vertices, or the number of vertices, also count the number of edges. Count the number of edges, count the number of faces, Count the number of faces and the number of faces per vertex. The number of sides per face. So quantifying is a way to examine and to watch for patterns. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to examine each solid, count off the number of vertices, number of edges, number of faces, number of faces per vertex, and the number of sides per face. So you have the tetrahedron, the cube, the octahedron, the dodecahedron, and the icosahedron. So once we have these all counted, we're going to um, write it all out in this table and look for patterns. Now can you please take out your name tags because I'm going to call on you for answering, answering the questions on this table. So work on this together in your groups and then I'll come around and see how you're doing with that. I can look at your platonic solids if you have questions while we're doing that. And then after we get the charts filled out in our groups, we'll talk together about the chart.
Okay, so let's work on this chart together. <laughs> we'll start in the back and we'll go staking around the room until we get everybody answering questions, okay? Okay, so starting with you, here's our tetrahedron. How many vertices did the tetrahedron have? Four. Four. Okay, good. And then next, how many edges did the tetrahedron have? Six. Six. Okay, good. Number of faces? 
We're gonna we're gonna go around. Oh, You're sorry. gonna get the very last, but I'm, I'm glad you know. Okay. It. Oh, I'm gonna do <laughs> okay. Okay. Figures. I'm asking you the one you didn't get to. Right? Um, number of faces per vertex. Mm-hmm. Good. Number of sides per face. Three. That was triangles. All right. Next, we're on the cube. So, how many vertices does the cube have? Are we on Maggie or Abby? Uh, okay. How many vertices? Eight. Eight. Okay. And how many edges? Twelve. Twelve. Good. And did you get time to get this filled in at all? Uh, no. Not yet. Six. Six. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, Haley? Three faces per vertex, good. And number of sides per face? Four. Four. All right. So now we're on the octahedron. If you have a favorite shape, this would be my favorite shape. I don't know if you have a favorite shape. Okay, so octahedron, number of vertices? Six. Six. And number of edges? Did you get that number of edges? Twelve. Twelve. And then we're on the number of faces. Hope, did you get that one? Uh, yes. Uh, no, I must have. Uh, I think I did it wrong. So. Okay. I did the wrong shape. Different shape there? How about you, Rico? What? You have the number of faces on the octagon? No, I have it. It's eight. Eight. Yes, it is eight. Okay. Number of faces per vertex, Corbin? Uh, faces per vertex? Four. Four. Yes, indeed. Four faces meet at each corner. And then we're on the number of sides per face. Yes, because it's a triangles. Okay, now we're getting the harder shapes. So the dodecahedron. How many vertices did the dodecahedron have? 20. 20, good. Okay, well, let's fill in the rest together because these are getting hard. So who has the number of edges on the dodecahedron? 30, good. How about the number of faces on the dodecahedron? 12, good. Number of faces per vertex? Three. Three. And number of sides per face? Five. Five. All right. And the uh, most sides of all, the icosahedron. How many vertices did the icosahedron have? Twelve. Twelve. Did you uh, still up? Thank you. Did you get the dodecahedron roll? Should I read that off again? Could you see that before? Okay. Thank you. Okay, so icosahedron has 12 vertices. How many edges? 30. 30 edges. <laughs> how, how many faces? 20. 20. Yeah. And the number of faces per vertex? Five. And the number of sides per face. Oh, you did really well. So you'll want this chart on your 3 by 5 card probably because I will ask you multiple choice questions about it. Okay, so you'll need to copy that down. Now we're going to look at this chart for patterns. So I'll make it bigger. I think it's November 6th. It's the next quiz. By the way, your pictures of these are your um, class activities, okay? Two class activities. So that's for not this Sunday, but the following Sunday. Make sure you have them done. So does anybody see any patterns in these numbers? Number of 
These are all even numbers. Interesting. All even numbers. No odds in there. So that would be something to see if you could make a um, regular polygon with an odd number of faces. I, I just I keep saying regular polygon. I mean a regular solid. Could you make a regular solid with an odd number of faces? We'll actually find the answer to that question in the next section. Any other patterns that you observe? <laughs> Only thing I can think of is that the number of faces and the number of sides per face, the last two columns, there's no more than five. That's true. Yeah, so we didn't use any, we didn't make any hexagon platonic solids. No platonic solids made out of hexagon. Or, or any other regular polygon with more than five sides. And we didn't try and put more than five, um, five faces at one vertex. Any other patterns that you observe? Good. Yeah. So the three, the three and the four change places for the cube and the octahedron, and for the dodecahedron and icosahedron, the three and the five change places. So maybe these two are related somehow, and maybe these two are related somehow. Do you see any other similarities? Any other patterns or similarities? The number of edges for the cube, cube and the octahedron is the same. Mm -hmm. And then for the dot, dot. dodecahedron yeah. and the <laughs> And the other one is 30, so they're, yeah. they're the same. So that, that continues to sh uh, bring about some feeling that maybe these two are related, dodecahedron and icosahedron, and cube and octahedron might be related because they have the three and four trading places and the three and five trading places and the shared number of edges. Any other? Yes. Kind of spaced out a little bit, so I don't know if this has been done already, but um, any shape that has like the triangle has to have like three sides per face? Yeah. So any shape that has the triangles has to have the three sides per face. So you think maybe the triangle shapes would have some similarity. The, the platonic solids that all have triangles for their faces might have some similarities. The vertices and that. the faces are swapping too. It's like um, the So the vertices and the faces are swapping yeah. too on these, um, yeah. these two sets and these two sets. Your author calls this phenomena that you see with those swapping sides there, those swapping numbers. How do you get an octahedron from a cube? How do you get an octahedron from a cube? Let's see if I can find his life lesson. His life lesson is coincidences are flashing lights alerting us to potential insights. So these uh, coincidences are giving you insights. 
We can get an octahedron from a cube. If you think about it, you are sitting in a cube. Well, not quite a perfect cube. So let me put a cube in a, in a, let's see. The octahedron and the cube, we'll put those together. You just have to move around some of the, some of the lines, because they both have the same number of uh, edges. They do, they have the same number of edges. They have the same number of edges. And if you put, think of yourself as being in a cube and think of there being a point on the ceiling right in the middle and a point on the floor right in the middle and then a point in the middle of all four walls. Okay, so you picture a point above you on the floor and all four walls. Well, if you connect those together, you get an octahedron. Here's the point on the ceiling, here's the point on the floor, and here's the point in the corner of all four walls. Your author has a drawing of that. So the cube has a point in the center of each face. And if you connect all of those together with edges, you get your octahedron. You can also go the other way around. In the center of each face of the octahedron, you can put a point and connect those edges, connect those points with edges, and you'll get the cube. That's called duality. So these two symmetric shapes are dual with one another. The tetrahedron and cube are dual. If you put the if you put a, a vertice in the center of each face of the cube and connect with edges, you get the tetrahedron. If you put a vertice in the center of each face of the tetrahedron and connect the edges, connect with edges, you get a cube. That's the same thing happens with your um, dodecahedron and icosahedron. That's why there, um, if you put a, a vertice from each dodecahedron in each of the 20 faces of the cube and connect with the 30 edges, you get the icosahedron. There is a picture of that as well, but it's a little harder to see. So these shapes that are symmetric within themselves are also symmetric with each other in the form of duality. The icosahedron and dodecahedron are dual. Well, that just leaves somebody out. We don't like to do that. <laughs> that leaves out our tetrahedron. So this duality came about by putting a point in the center of each face and connecting those vertices with edges. What if you did that with the tetrahedron? What if you put a point in the center of each face with the tetrahedron, including the bottom, and connected those points with edges, what would you get? Good, a tetrahedron. The tetrahedron is self-dual. It's dual with itself. The tetrahedron is dual with itself, and your author does have a picture of that. So here's a tetrahedron with a point in the center of each face, and then those points are connected with edges, and you get a tetrahedron, only it's pointed downward and the opposite way from the one pointing upward. Oh, thank you. Thank you.
I am so glad you caught that. The octahedron and the cube. Good catch. The octahedron and the cube are dual. The tetrahedron is dual with itself. So this is the octahedron. And it's the one that you can picture connecting to the center of the ceiling and floor and all four walls if you're inside of a cube. I did have another question for you. On this chart, where did it go? Here it is. On this chart, if I take the, um, the number of faces and I multiply by the number of sides per face, shouldn't I get the number of edges? I mean, you take, you take the um, four faces on the tetrahedron and there's three sides on each face because they're triangles and then multiply together I get 12 but that's not how many edges I have I only have six edges same thing with the others why is that they all share they're all sharing edges good very good because they're sharing edges they're sharing edges so each edge is used on two different faces and so instead of instead of getting the 12 4 times 3 is just half of that 6 or 6 times 4 is 24, not, um, but I, half of that is 12. So when we multiply, we actually get 2 times the number of, of um, edges. So that kind of can help you when you're trying to count if you're not sure you filled out your chart correctly. Well, these photonic solids are the most regular besides a sphere in three dimensions. But there's another um, family of solids that are, are almost as regular. They're called the um, truncated photonic solids. So let me show you a truncated photonic solid. So here's this nice uh, clay tetrahedron that my husband made for me, and I'm going to cut it off. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the tip off. I'm going to cut each vertice off. Now as I cut the vertice off of the tetrahedron, what shape will be left here? If I cut nice and flat, what shape will I have? Yeah, I'll have a triangle. So I have a triangle. Now if I keep doing that, I'm going to have to ask my husband to fix it. But if I keep doing that, what shape is going to be on this side here? I'm making triangle shapes when I cut, but what shape is going to be... How many sides will be here? Oh, if you cut them. Just that or all of them? Are? All of them. Would be it. Isn't it this? Six. Oh, six sides. Yeah, six sides. Six sides, because um, we had a triangle. We had a triangle, and then we cut off each tip. <coughs> so we went from um, three sides to six. Clearly, I didn't do a very good job. <laughs> but those are called truncated platonic solids. So that's, that's quite a whole other family of platonic solids. And I have one right here. That's my dog's toy. <laughs> but it's a truncated platonic solid. Let's see if we can figure out which platonic solid had its corners cut off to make this shape. It's also the shape of a soccer ball. Just this is smaller and easier to fit than a soccer ball. So is it a cube? If I cut off the corners of a cube, what shape would I get left behind here? I cut off the corner and I'll have Mm -hmm. 
So I'm cutting off three sides. So that's going to leave a triangle. It's going to leave a triangle. And if I do that on each of the four corners, how many sides will I have then? So I'm cutting off each corner. What shape will be left behind? Or how many sides will I have? Eight, yeah. So cut off each corner and you leave eight sides behind and you have triangles. So we don't have triangles and eight sides here. We have pentagons and hexagons. So it's not a trunk, this is not a truncated cube. How about my octahedron? If I cut off the tip of the octahedron, what shape will there be here? square because there's four being cut away so it's not this there's no squares here so not a truncated octahedron how about the um, pentagon what shape am I getting when I cut the corner off the pentagon triangle, triangle yeah I called it a pentagon it's a um, dodecahedron so yeah since three sides are meeting at each corner when I cut those corners off I create a triangle no triangles around the soccer ball. So that leaves the icosahedron. Let's see if that makes sense. So there's five sides meeting at each corner. I cut that off. I'm going to have a five-sided flat surface. So that's these little pentagons. Uh, and I'm going to do that with every triangle. So the corner of each triangle is disappearing, leaving me six-sided hexagons. So if you take an icosahedron like this and cut off all the corners to make a truncated icosahedron, you get a soccer ball. So that's where your soccer balls come from. Now another interesting aspect of the platonic solids is um, their, their three-dimensional plotting. When you plot in two dimensions, when you plot in two dimensions, you just need two numbers to tell where you're at in the plane. So if I give you an ordered pair one, two, you only have two directions to go. So you can go right one and up two, and you can plot a point. Well, these are three-dimensional objects, so you need three three points to tell where the platonic solids would be in three dimensions. So when you plot in three dimensions, you have the two dimensions that you always are familiar with, but you have one more. You have one more dimension coming out of the plane. Now that's hard to draw in 2D. We um, make a slanted line to try and show a, a third dimension coming out of the plane. So if we go up, right, and then forward, like that. Well, when you take a look at the platonic solids three-dimensional graphs, their vertices can be plotted. And you see some of the numbers that you are familiar with in these plots. So this is from Wikipedia. And we have the ordered pairs of the vertices. And you see the vertices have a familiar number, B. So that golden ratio that came up when we were working with the golden rectangle, that comes up in plotting these as well. If you take your icosahedron, and you hold on to the center, take two parallel, take two parallel sides and hold them there. Okay, so you have the top five triangles and the bottom five triangles, and you're holding two of the opposing 
vertices, you're holding a golden rectangle. So the golden rectangle shows up in the, the icosahedron, which is amazing. Like, what does the icosahedron have to do with golden rectangle? In Wikipedia, they have three golden rectangles put together, and then the vertices connected with edges, and that's what I have here as well. Three golden rectangles put together, and when you connect the vertices with edges, you get the icosahedron right here. I know in math you like to see if there's a real life application. So one of the real life applications of the platonic solids comes up in chemistry. We see the platonic hydrocarbon. So some of your platonic solid shapes are mimicked in chemistry. So these are the most symmetric shapes that you have in 3D besides a sphere. And we're going to see how many there could be in the next section. We've only made five. Are there more? We'll find out in the next section. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, I will see you on Monday. Have a great weekend.